so you want to know how to overcome every storm in your life. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can see through God's perspective in every storm and overcome the problems that come against you in life. Welcome, I'm Dr. Steve, and you get to join me in my prayer room on this YouTube channel to learn how to have a vital encounter with God that releases evident results in your prayer life so that you can see a different world around you. Today, we're talking about overcoming every storm in our life. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We see in this verse that it's God's will that we be anxious for nothing, that no circumstance, that no storm in our lives would be able to come in and steal the peace of God from our hearts. In fact, that verse goes on to say, the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. Storms are struggles that torment our minds and hearts. It can be ordinary circumstances, raging events, or manifested fears that bring Bring spiritual attacks in and around our lives. If a storm can get on the inside of your heart, it can cause trauma and stress and problems in your life. It can cause you to act differently. It can cause you to become a different person altogether. You'll react to problems rather than acting out of wisdom and insight from God. And if that storm on the inside can rage within you and overcome you, you can be controlled by the devil himself. The greatest thing that he can do in the middle of a storm is to cause us not to trust in God any longer. There's a story in the Bible where the disciples were on the water and Jesus was sleeping in the boat and we see that they were overcome by the storm. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Have you ever had a situation in your life and you've really believed God has said, step out. It could be to marry someone. It could be to go to university. It could be to start a business, start a job, build a relationship with a friend. And in the midst of going out and stepping out and launching out into what you feel God has said to do, you've encountered a storm, a circumstance, a situation. Well, how did you react to that? Did you pull back and feel like God wasn't speaking to you? Or did you look at the first words you'd heard from God before you went into that storm? God might have said, yes, this is the woman you're meant to marry. This is the man you're meant to marry. And in the middle of your marriage, you've started to encounter struggles and issues and problems. It's not a time to turn away from the word of God that you've already heard. It's a time to look to him again and hear his voice clearly repeating those words that he spoke before. Launch out, go to the other side. And as we step out and we obey the voice of God, even in the middle of a storm, we're able to walk through to the other side and overcome. Many years ago, when my wife and I first got together, we ended up going through some storms in our relationship and we broke up and my wife went back to Canada. This was before we got married. And I was praying one time about the situation and felt strongly in my heart that God impressed upon me. Yes, it was his will for us to get married. And I even got a timeline of two years that we would be married. So I pressed in. I went to Bible college and I stayed in focus for my destiny and calling. And wouldn't you know it, within a year's time, we started building our relationship back together. And we started getting back together. And two years from the point that I'd heard him in prayer. 
we were married. When we broke up, when the storm came in and destruction happened in our relationship at that point, did I give up and say, no, it wasn't God's will? I felt it was God's will as we were going into that relationship. I felt I'd had a clear go ahead from God's spirit. And as we were in the storms, in the circumstances of our relationship, because of my own issues, it was my chauvinism, it was my humanness that started to cause problems. And we came out the other side, but I was able to hear God's voice in a storm. How about you? What do you do when you're going through a relational issue? When you're going through a financial breakdown? When you're going through problems in life because of external circumstances? Do you stop? Do you look to heaven? Do you open your heart to God? And do you hear his voice again reassuring you? If you hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you about your business and starting up or starting in a job for the first time and you you believe it's the will of God, don't allow the struggles and the relationship problems in the midst of that job or business tear you down. Look at the word of God. He said, go to the other side. That means he wants us to succeed. That's it. That means he wants us to overcome. If you've heard God's voice speaking to you to get out of debt, and you've started working and walking in the process and you've taken on a budget and you've started to work your finances in the right direction and you start getting swamped with storms of financial difficulties. Look back to the promise of God. It is not his will that you'd perish. It is his purpose that you get to the other side, that yes, you'd be debt free, that you wouldn't be under that weight anymore. Keep putting that money away. Keep paying off those credit card bills. Keep budgeting. Keep pressing in. Even though the storm comes, keep reaching out to God, keep praying and believing, confessing faith and truth over that situation. Yes, you will be free of debt. Yes, you will prosper. Yes, you will overcome. When Jesus woke up, he stilled the storm with a word. He was at peace. He carried peace in his heart and he spoke from that resource of peace and he spoke still storm. Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, where is your faith? And he was saying, what are you trusting in? Where is your focus? What are you putting your belief in? Are you putting your belief in the natural storm? Are you putting your faith in the God who is bigger than any storm? If you've been enjoying this video so far, hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notification bell to receive more of these videos in future. And now I want you to receive some more of that peace in the midst of your storms. So what do you do when you're caught in a storm, in the midst of situations and circumstances in life? Have you ever heard of the principle of the eye of the storm? You when a storm is raging around you and circling around you and causing disruptions and and problems. Well, when you get to the middle of that storm, there is peace. In a natural storm, you can see in many circumstances what is called the eye of the storm. Well, I want to sort of play with that principle and that vision in some aspect. And when you're in the middle of a storm, I want you to open your eyes and see from God's perspective of peace. Nothing overcomes our God. Nothing defeats our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing is greater than the creator of the universe. Nothing is stronger than our strong God. So we can strengthen ourselves in the hope and promise of his word. The word he spoke to us before the storm. The word we can get in the middle of the storm by opening our eye in the eye of the storm. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. You can bring peace into an an emotional situation with another person. You can bring peace into a work environment. You can bring peace into your business. You can bring peace into your heart as you're coming out of financial difficulties. As you come and you find strength in your God, in his presence. But when we focus on the storm and the storm gets on the inside of us, the storm rules us and controls us and starts to manipulate us and and work us into a frenzy and wear us out and, and tear us down. 
And then we don't have the insight and the revelation and the emotional quotient and the ability to overcome the storm because it gets on the inside of us. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. No matter what happens in our lives, we can have that peace according to his words. He speaks to us. We hear him in our heart. We're filled with life and confidence and faith. And that pushes out the fear so it can't come in and control us and manipulate us and destroy our lives. And we overcome all tribulation in life. Tribulation, philipsis, pressure, oppression, stress, anguish, tribulation, adversity, affliction, crushing, squashing, squeezing, distress. The word is used of crushing grapes or olives in a press. Jesus overcame every situation, every storm on planet earth because he lived in the eye of the storm. He lived in that place of peace in the presence of God. Whenever he walked into a circumstance where someone needed deliverance or whenever he walked into a situation where someone needed to be raised from the dead and there was terror going on around, there were people full of fear, people full of anguish and all the pressures of life, Jesus brought the peace into that situation. Can I pray this for you right now? Father, I pray right now that you'd help us to be in the eye of the storm, not under the issues of the storm, but in the peace of your presence, in the midst of the circumstances of life. We'd hear your voice clearly and we'd act according to your will. We'd speak life and we'd bring relationships into great places in the midst of the storm because we see from your perspective in the eye of the storm. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's an illustration of someone having a fight with their wife or husband and they're in the midst of the turmoil and the stress and they're about to say something they shouldn't say. But from the innermost being comes a voice on the inside to be still. When you're a father and a mother and you have small children around you, and sometimes you're in stressful circumstances and and you're about to say something that you may regret in future. And as you're about to say that, something from the inside comes out of you. Peace, love, mercy. You may encounter stress at work. You may be the boss and you're, you're, you're there in a stressful circumstance and situation. You have employees around and you're just about to speak something that's going to cause harm to your reputation and your leadership in the future. And all of a sudden from the inside, something comes up. Peace. Your accounts may be being drained as you're, as you're trying to get out of debt, but somehow something's coming around to steal from you. You can speak to that spirit of lack. Be gone. Get out of my finances. I declare prosperity. I declare health in my finances. I declare virtue in my life. And I declare an overcoming power to overcome the spirit of debt and lack. Be gone from my life in Jesus' name. I've discovered one of the most powerful things I can do in the morning devotion times I have with God is rest in his presence. Get accustomed to his peace, sensing the tranquility of his presence around my life. Coming into that place of of that eye of the storm every morning, knowing that his peace is around me, sensitizing my heart to his voice, Jesus speaking into my heart, the Holy Spirit bringing refreshing. As I come into that place every day, I'm opening my heart and preparing my life to be very quickly moved into that place of peace, even if a storm comes around me during my day. When you have that ability to very quickly shift from speaking death to speaking life, You'll transform the relationships around you, your marriage, your children, your work situation, the business, the home, wherever it may be. So here's three things that you and I can do in the middle of a storm. Number one, look back to what he spoke to you before you came into the storm. Number two, reach out in the eye of the storm to hear his voice again, to do something that he speaks in the midst of the storm. And number three, seek his presence in the midst of that storm, go to that place of peace. God doesn't promise us that we will not have storms in life, 
but he does promise you and I that we will overcome. If you want to overcome every storm in your life, come to that place of seeing in the eye of the storm the peace of God. No bad news, only good news. And that's the title of the video that's coming up next, Only Good News. I welcome you to click on that because you'll hear good news. You'll hear from God speaking to you in the midst of the storm, knowing what to do when you're in that place of peace, listening for his voice. And then step up and step out on that good news and overcome and have a great life. Mm -hmm.